इसका मन ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी एंड वेलकम टू दिस वेबिनार ऑन साइबर सिक्योरिटी एंड दिस वेबिनार इज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय स्कॉलर आईटी सॉल्यूशंस a little bit about our company is called it solutions we are one of, we are one of the biggest solutions providers in the us we are a group of technical and uh, people who are expertise in a lot of different technologies we have a team of experience as well as new freshers we serve clients around the entire us and it's one of the best companies in the world to work for in the us you can follow our page in like social networks like facebook linkedin instagram everywhere and please do and a little bit about me i'm a freelance consultant and i'm an expert in a lot of technologies and and i advise business on digital transformation and development of their business through digital methods and as a part time i love to be a mentor and advisor to you know, uh, a lot of people who are like you know looking for guidance so any of you feel free to like you know approach me of any kind of guidance regarding technology or business and i'll be happy to help okay so I want to know a little bit more about the people in this audience. So, how many of you know about cybersecurity, cyberspace, or what it means? Or you're totally new to this? You can type it in the comments. There's a chat box over there. You can type. Or it would be nice if we could interact with each other during the session. I don't want to be talking all the time. okay so let's move on <clears throat> so introduction to the cyberspace so what is a cyberspace so cyberspace is a word like it's used to describe the virtual space which you created using a uh, countless numbers of interconnected networks and these networks are used to connect everybody like this webinar like so many people are here like about 20 people are here and we are connected through the cyberspace because all these people are from different locations and maybe in different uh, parts of the world and we are connected through this cyberspace and that's how we are able to arrange this uh, meeting in the first place and yeah so the technical definition varies from people to people because there is science fiction and science as well cyberspace gen generally denotes this fictional space created by all these interconnected networks in the internet and why are we talking about cyberspace in this age and time because it's important in the future everything will happen in this space commercial activities entertainment and other activities so like people view movies through the internet now they play games and all the e-commerce uh, digital transactions everything happens in the cyberspace so at this point it's very very important that we get to know about this cyberspace and that also means that a large amount of people are coming and we need some kind of regulation the number of regulations in the cyberspace are increasing and it's essential to like you know know the rules and regulations which are there in the cyberspace <clears throat> everybody generally knows the internet through something which we call a browser and google let me take a moment to know if everybody can hear me yes sir okay thank you and yeah so everybody knows the web through this thing called the browser where you type in an address and you find content so a lot of people don't know there are other web places so what we uh, whatever you access on a day to day basis using google or any other methods it's known as a surface web and most people don't know that surface web accounts to only 5% whatever google or yahoo or what kind of search engine can find it accounts to only 5% of the entire web and beyond that it's the deep web and the dark web and most people most common people never get to know that there's a deep web or a dark web behind all these things and this is where everything else happens apart from the how the users access the internet and like i said we are going towards a digital economy everything is becoming digital and as people who are interested in technology we need to know that where this is all going like how it relates to us every single thing is becoming digital from even farming everything is connected to the internet so everything in the future will be dependent on the 
digital economy or the cyberspace. Okay, and coming back to the surface web. Surface web, yeah, like 5%. Almost every website, every user spends the majority of the time like only in this 5% of the surface web. And most people don't really know that deep web and dark web exists. So what is the deep web? Deep web is close to about 95%, deep and dark web, about the entire content in the internet. And most of these are like backend services the data which is stored, the kind of research articles, legal documents, financial records, your, your photos, your videos, or any kind of things are stored in the deep web. Most of the people do not access the deep web. Why? Because it's more of a technical person's job. And most of these things are accessed only by hackers and technical people or government people or the people who are running the companies. Most people are technicians and the number of technicians compared to the number of normal people are an astoundingly low number. And then we come to the like, the final thing is the dark web. Almost nobody knows about the dark web. Even the professionals, they don't know about the dark web. Why? Because dark web is meant to be hidden from everybody. Most of the illegal activities and all the kind of things which are not permitted in society, from arms to drug smuggling to everything happens there. And most governments have specific kind of rules. So if you just enter the dark web, you are arrested or you're pulled into question. So anybody who goes there without even like, you know, knowing or it's, it's almost impossible to go there with like, you know, unknowingly. You can go there only if you want to, through specific methods. So if you just enter the dark web and the government agency or anybody finds out, they immediately gonna call you and question you because the, kind of thing is only accessed by security professionals, the government, or the people who are doing illegal stuff. And they're very good at hiding themselves. So all sorts of marketplaces, illegal drillings, websites, everything is there in the dark web. And if anybody has any questions, even in the middle, you can type it out in the chat because you might forget it at the end when the Q&A second comes. So you can type it in the middle in the chat and I'll be happy to answer that. Okay, so the surface web, everybody knows very well because we use it on a daily basis and we don't really bother much about what's going on in the surface web because nothing actually goes on. The deep web is where most of the transactions, records, your personal records, everything gets stored. So why is the deep web important? Deep web has all your data from your mobile phones, your passwords, your account numbers, your details, the databases, your photos, everything is there in the deep web and only they can be accessed only through people going through a gateway, like a password, a protected authorization, like that. They cannot be accessed by everybody. Only the people who are involved can access them. So all these data is there in the deep web. So let me come back to the, uh, let me start talking about the threats of cyberspace. So as per everything, anywhere you keep something good, if you keep a gold inside a bank, people are gonna come and try to rob it the illegal way. And that's the same thing. All these data and the valuable records you store and everything like that is of value to somebody. So they'll come and try to take it away. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Hello? Okay, moving on. So with every new technology anybody introduced, there are people who are using it to do good things. And there are people who are using it to do bad things as well. That is like, yeah, they're everywhere, 50-50 all the time. So cyberspace has bought a lot of good things to us. From this meeting to everything that goes on our daily lives, we use cyberspace. And because of that, other people try to come and you know, steal our private information or do all sorts of criminal activities. You will be surprised at how much of crimes is going on in the cyberspace. And most normal people do not you know, get to know all these things. So money laundering. So what is money laundering? So money laundering is illegal transfer of money to avoid taxation or uh, illegal earnings to hide it from the government. Sometimes these transactions are very, very complex. Some people transfer all these black money or illegal money or drug smuggling money like about 200, 250 times, and even 1,000 times between different accounts to evade the government. That's how deep it is go it goes in the cyber space to actually avoid getting caught by doing something illegal. And 
the most dangerous thing that happens in the cyberspace is terrorism, which is termed as cyber terrorism. There were a lot of cases where people used maps or information or data gathered from the cyberspace to act to steal privileged information of users and everybody like that to use against them, like planting bombs or like, you know, finding locations where they have to do that and communicating using like if you use WhatsApp on a regular basis, it's end to end encrypted, which means that the company itself cannot have access to whatever you're communicating. So that's a good thing. Everybody requires their privacy. Like, let's just say you're sending your password to somebody over WhatsApp. If a company or anybody else gets access to that, then they might get access to whatever your deep web content is. So that end to end encryption is good in preserving your privacy. But at the same time, the company cannot also find out a terrorist attack has been planned through WhatsApp. So that comes into question. Should the companies be able to read that information or not? And information theft is a common cyberspace crime which happens on a regular basis, much more than what people think. Every week, there are new passwords leaked in the internet. And the companies have no other solution to that except actually asking their users to uh, you know regularly update their passwords, uh, authorize two-factor or the like you know methods. So you have two devices to authorize your account, so people cannot steal them. And a lot of other valuable data. Companies spend a much of their time and effort into gathering data, which is valuable for their business. And all these is stored in the, stored in the deep web. And there's a lot of time that this data if leaked to anybody else their rival companies or some people who want to like you know use that against them the, that could be the end of the company that data is very, very valuable if anybody here has worked in a corporate environment you see how much they put effort into security because even a little bit of leak or anything like that could actually seal the fate of a company because whatever the users are seeing inside the company the methods, the data, or anything like that they gather from the company could be used to destroy the company as well. Something which was built maybe, what, 20, 25 years, and that could be destroyed in an instant just because of data. So that like makes data very, very valuable, especially to like companies of small or big scale. And uh, this is something like cyberbullying, stalking, and harassment. This is something which happens to girls most of the time on social media. And most people get to know about this because it's in, it's in the news occasionally or even regularly. So people use cyberspace as a way of safely bullying another person. Har abusive comments, hateful posts, videos, death threats, everything. They try to like, you know, abuse people over the internet, like sitting from uh, the safe position in their house. They don't, they don't have to be accountable for anything. They could harass a person continuously and get away with it. So they use this against them. They abuse them. And girls are usually subjected to stalking on the internet. When they post some kind of pictures or their information or any kind of thing, like there are people who are like, you know, trying to like, you know, get that information, follow them. Like if they're posting some location where like I'm at uh, OT celebrating with my parents, they're trying to load that location and, you know, actually stalk them in real life. And harassment. Most people who like you know express their opinions of, uh, outside in social media are generally subject to harassment, and you know like people who have different opinions or people away from uh, their own uh, level, everybody tries to bring them down. But that's normal. When this goes to an extent where it drives a person to suicide, there's like so many cases where cyberbullying and harassment and stalking, and you know creating all these kind of. Um, no, a toxic solu uh, situation for people has resulted in you know suicide of a lot of people who are like you know emotionally weak, and that has become like uh, people didn't take it seriously cyberbullying, stalking, or harassment because they didn't think that it could lead somebody to you know, actually killing themselves. But there are so many cases, and you, it might it might be happening even right now. And cyber warfare. So cyber warfare is essentially like. Even though it seems like a bad thing, cyber warfare and espionage is like a two-sided knife. It can be used for both good and bad. For example, recently, or maybe 10 years back or something, Israel is uh, at war with the Gaza, uh, Gaza uh, Palestinians. Yeah, Palestinians. So 
the thing what they did was they had missile systems which were operated using computer systems so what israel did was to disable their missile systems they hacked into the palestinians computer systems and they disabled their missiles and anti air guns so the israeli army could go in there easily and bomb the entire place and they palestinians couldn't do anything because their systems were disabled the reason they were disabled because is because of them relying too much on computers to activate them instead of you know manually targeting them so that led to people i mean you know, knowing that because the war is actually going on in this digital age because most of the bigger countries have stopped the war right now only the smaller countries like israel palestine and third world countries are like indulged in warfare this is like one of the few things where the world saw what could happen if we use cyber techniques in this age and time to wage war against another country in the world war 2 times even then this happened but at a very low level what like um, enigma machines breaking codes and that's when people started you know like you know encryption in the first place so the other the people could not read the signals which were transmitted during this kind of war times cyber espionage is simply like spies everybody's heard of james bond and all the kind of movies so they spy on people and you know you see bollywood movies you know showing spies at a lot of time so what you do is you try to get information from them even without you know being in that country using your networking skills and your hacking skills okay so coming back to like types of threats and attackers so not all uh, people have heard the term hackers a lot in science fiction movies a lot of foreign movies and even in um, it's become a staple in even bollywood where they show people hacking into systems banks to you know rob the bank and everything but not all hackers are bad people so there are two types of essential hackers white hat and black hat and, and the name as says like white hat are the good hackers and the black hat are the bad hackers and the primary means of white hats is to like behave like black black hats without intention to like you know harm people so they can actually find out like what are the vulnerabilities in the system and i would like also to talk although this does not directly related to like you know cyber space these are also tools which are used by hackers and uh, criminals cyber criminals to actually get their work done everybody heard of computer virus worms trojan horses keyloggers malware and ransomware and the latest threat was ran ransomware so what ransomware does was simply lock your system and demand a huge sum to be transferred them using cryptocurrency so what it does is it locks something let's just, let's just say you're a video editor and you have ages and ages 10 months of work and your computer is locked and you can't unlock it without you know paying the amount so they blackmail you like that all your 10 months work is lost which could cost you a lot of money than the amount they're asking so they're technically you know doing research on the people and asking money based on how much ever they can actually provide trojan horses are like no, uh, they come into your system like normal programs and once you find you safely settle down they start showing their true self and they start you know compromising your system causing problems stealing your data and everything and the, one of the most important things anybody who is like a cyber security professional should know is about keyloggers although they are very simple in the way they operate they can be very dangerous mainly because what keyloggers essentially do is they are hidden software they don't have any user interface they are installed in a system and they'll be uh, they won't show any kind of signs of being inside the system and anything you type on the screen is recorded so what they essentially do is any activity or anything like that on your computer is recorded and the most common thing it's used to get is your password because when you type something it's usually your password majority of what you do is with your mouse and when you type something you type your password and they take your password and access to everything you ever got malwares and worms are put inside your system just to like you know sell garbage a lot of people who are doing like you know advertising pop ups and all these things they use malwares and um, adwares to promote their products into buying you uh, like you know cheap products or like you know scams and everything like that is done using ransomware i mean malware and most people are not aware of email phishing scams but even now there is like a lot of cases where email phishing scams have done a lot of damage to a person in more than one way so what are email phishing scams 
So everybody uses email, especially professionals, to communicate, to get uh, information, to get updates. Yeah, to get updates. And what happens is that these people, they impersonate. Everybody has an Amazon account. So they make something and they impersonate. Like, for example, we are calling from Amazon. Your password has been uh, compromised. So reset your password. So when you click, uh, click a link on that, it leads to some other website. And it has something similar. For example, Amazon.com, they, uh, they change it to something like Amazon2.com, Amazon.com, Amazon with an extra N.com. And people don't notice these small things. So they end up entering their private information in somebody else's website. And they take control of that information. And they take control of your account. And they take all your money, simple. And finally, impersonators. Impersonators are dangerous people as well. For example, let's just say a lot of people are sharing their posts on Instagram. Let's just say one of your friends is in Instagram. And when these people post their pictures, let's just say their photos are privately available. What these people do is they take all these pictures and they make a Facebook account or another Instagram account with the same pictures and the same bio links and the same user ID and everything like that, with small changes, of course. Excuse me. Yeah, so once they do that, they impersonate you. They go to all your contacts, send a request saying that, hey, it's me. And I, we know each other like that. So what happens is you think it's, a, it's the person you know. You think uh, you know that person and you accept their request. Once you let them in, they get all the information about your location, your thing, and they, they can even ask you like, hey, I, I urgently need some money. Send me some money and I'll, I'll pay you back. And you think it's your friend, but it's somebody else. And this, this is one of the information like anybody should know when facing people online. It could be anybody because anybody can change the profile picture or you know pass I mean uh, username or bio to like you know impersonate another person. So I want to talk a little bit more about black hat hackers because they are the majority of the threat through the cyberspace. These people operate out of anywhere pretty much, and most of these hackers are spread out throughout the globe to make sure that. For example, let's just say a team of organized hackers. One of them is in Australia, another of them is in Sweden, another of them is in Russia. And they somehow have these secret meetings in the dark web or some other place where they cannot be tracked. So why are they spread out? They are spread out because it's impossible to like, you know, for a, let's just say there's a security agency in Russia, they can arrest only one person. And to arrest another person who is a citizen of another country, you have to contact the law enforcement agencies of that country. And by the time they get alert that one of them is arrested and they will have enough time to get away. And these remote teams and organized uh, black hat hackers are very dangerous. Any kind of hacking teams or anybody always operate in this way. And even if they're in the same country, they are spread out remotely and they have high amount of knowledge in any field related to hacking, networking, access systems, how to compromise a system, how to lock it, how to penetrate a network, how to penetrate a firewall without getting noticed. They are very, very good at what they do. And most people, when I talk about cybersecurity, ask me like, what kind of tools do the black hats use? Why are they like, so good? The re I can't really give you an answer on that because if, you, if there was a tool that you could download in the internet that could let you become a master hacker or something like that, everybody would be a hacker. The black hats actually invent their own software, their own methods, their own tools. Not all of them have the same kind of skills. Some are good at you know, penetrating the firewall. Some are good at like, you know, compromising systems. Some are good at hardware protocols. Some are good at so software protocols. And then that is the reason they form teams. And, uh, somebody's somebody's uh, mic is on. Can you mute yourself? Okay, thank you. And yeah, so that's about the black hats. So major, if you are planning to become a cybersecurity professional, the majority of the problems you get is mainly because of black hats and organized crime cyber criminals. So since these people are the bad guys, there are good guys as well, of course. And white hats. 
white hats are actually ethical hackers as they're called or white hats they are hired by companies why do they hire them these people have identical skills to black hats except they are meant to hack a company expose its security vulnerabilities so the company can actually you know take um, action against that so these people essentially hack into the system the same thing what the black hats do but they do it so that the company can find out that this has a loophole and they can fix it so they're doing it for that purpose this is one of the common ways the companies use to combat all the cyber criminals and hackers and everything and the reality is that white hats most of them are not as skilled as the black hats and black hats are motivated by a lot of different things some of them they just want money through their skills and some of them they just want to show the world that they are such a skilled hacker and they've done so much they want that kind of attention and other people they just want to wreck the world they cyber criminals cyber terrorists they want to destroy everything there is so while white hats do not have such serial motivation they just want to support and guard their company so they are not as skilled as the black hats and that makes it like for the requirement of more black i mean white hats and ethical hackers are required by companies the most so cyber law in your country so everybody has heard about pirates and everybody in their life has downloaded some pirated software at one point or the other and yeah we might be even still using pirated software and everything like that but why do these pirates still operate why do the like you know they are not been arrested and even if they do get arrested the website comes down for a month and they start reappearing so why is there no end to this this is simply because there's a lot of loopholes in the kind of rules and regulations which are there in online piracy and these are rooted from the common thing that every country has different kind of rules recently there was this case where the chinese people came in and harassed uh, so many people in andhra pradesh to suicide harassed them with money and uh, everything like that to suicide and it became a huge issue and they were able to do that in india because the rules here are not as strict for the cyber space compared to the foreign countries and most of the time whenever these people cyber criminals or any kind of criminals they are doing it abroad and the com- the country or anything like that they found out this threat is there and they blocked it so they come to another country where the rules are more lenient or the rules have not yet been formed because these people are not exposed to this kind of uh, trouble so this is one other thing that you have to notice you have to know whatever is going on in the entire world not just your country if you want to become a cyber security professional because threats are everywhere and you won't know who will come where if somebody some kind of threat is there and abroad you should actually be able to handle it when it comes to india because it will eventually come here so what are the skills required to be a cyber security professional Pro- problem solving skills are the top because every time you come across some kind of issue the main thing you get is a problem and problem solving skills as easy as they sound they are not very common people who are effective at solving problems are very rare there are people who can solve mathematical problems where there is a limited number of variables and everything but when it comes to something which is more scenario oriented like it it differs with each scenario people usually train themselves to be good on a regular basis to routinely do something cyber security is not such thing you need to have problem solving skills to like you know shield yourself against any kind of threat anything might come so let's just say there's a threat which has happened in russia and the government blocked it over there you need to know about that how did they do that and the same threat might come into come to india somewhere in the future the same people even because they are not able to do it in russia they come to india and you must be able to like you know quickly think of something to you know neutralize the threat or at least you know do something to prevent it from happening again and problem solving skills are the most sought in this field and the next one is technical aptitude you need to know everything from network protocols to hardware protocols 
to different uh, operating systems. There are like primary three operating systems, uh, Macintosh, Linux, and Windows. You need to know them all because all three of them are different. Linux is generally said to be more secure than all the other things because of uh, them having more reliable updates and a core written like, you know, for security purposes. And Windows is more susceptible to like uh, security risks and everything like that because of their way of you know, how they are uh, written their code and everything. And all this is set to change because most people are more opting to like, you know, a more neutralized operating system these days. And people are mo moving towards the web more and more. And Microsoft announced that there won't be any updates to Windows 10. They are only issuing security updates. Um, uh, I mean, there won't be another operating system. The next thing will all be subscription-based. So everything will be in the cyberspace in the future. And all these things require security professionals to guard their data. Attention to detail. Now, this is another important thing. Every single detail matters. A single, uh, like you miss a small point, you could have missed everything. Because an attack doesn't happen at a very small level. If you see the networking layers and the different kind of networking protocols, such as hypertext transfer protocol uh, and unified data protocol and all these things, you have like, you don't know which layer it's happening. It's the, is it happening at the physical layer or at a software layer or an application layer? There is like so many ways that a network communicates and the structures and the data which is represented inside that is vast. You need to know where it's happening. So let's just say that wait, the issue is with the application. So it happens in the application layer. The network is how they hacked in. They somehow pass through the firewall without being detected. You need to know all these small details so you can quickly block those paths and then investigate what happened and how they did it. Communication skills. Communication skills are like, you know, common thing. Like anywhere you work in a corporate environment, you need to have communication skills because you are communicating, you're not alone. You're working as a team. So in that case, you need to have communication skills. And whatever the situation is, how much ever, like, is the situation important? Is the situation not that important? Should we deal with this situation or not? Should we like, uh, let's just say there's a new manager and he doesn't know a lot about security. You need to be able to communicate that his practices, the way he saves his password, the way he has his password very simple, can actually law make him vulnerable to attacks. And you should be able to say that in a way that he doesn't get offended or he doesn't think that you're bossing him around. So he takes your advice in a positive way. All these kind of skills go a long way in the corporate world. Able to communicate your thoughts and your suggestions and everything across to another person without, you know, getting them offended or making them feel bad or anything. Computer forensics. So what is forensics? So forensics is like any kind of crime always leaves some kind of clues for a professional or a detective to follow. And these are there and everywhere. So whenever, uh, you know, like whatever happens inside the computer is technically recorded. And even if it's not recorded, there is logs and the activities happening at there's everything recorded somewhere or the other you need to be able to find out using these logs these um, records to find out what happened and these hackers are very very smart they know how to hide their presence and sometimes they might even come inside do stuff and get out without getting noticed and at that time you will be lost like how do they do that so you will need to be able to be like you have computer forensic skills, like somehow find out how they got into an entry point or how they did this. And the constant desire to learn is very important because as technologies get updated, you need to get yourself updated as well. Because like the network protocols might change entirely in the future or something new might be added every year. And the way that technology is improving is every six months there's a new update, every three months there's a new update. And an understanding of hacking is very important. It is very hard for a white hat hacker to actually, an ethical hacker to think like a unethical hacker who's trying to do damage because these people are trying to protect people. You're essentially like a policeman trying to you know, go against a criminal. So if you see even in the police world, the people who know how the criminals think are the best at guarding their people because they know how a criminal thinks, how he'll hide, where he'll go, what he'll do, what is his next move because they think like a criminal. So it's ironical that a policeman who should be 
guarding people can only be good if he thinks like a criminal. But that's how it is. To fight demons, we have to become demons. So an understanding of hacking is very, very important. And every single way, you need to think like the hacker. And as far as India is concerned, there's a few um, um, bodies by both government and private. Data Security Council of India, like I said, data is very, very valuable. It can be used against you. So Data Security Council of India, like make sure that proper methods and rules and everything are like implemented to make sure that these kind of activities don't happen. And National Cyber Coordination Center is a body established again by the government of India. What they do is they make sure that all the different kind of companies, security organizations, consultants, everybody work together to you know ward off these uh, cyber threats which are happening at the national level. Sometimes an entire nation is attacked to steal information, like how these Chinese people do. The reason they everybody is aware of like you know why these people blocked all these Chinese apps recently because these people are trying to steal our data through the apps which they actually do post here and the Chinese government gets access to all those data and they use it against us. Cyber and Information Security Division, CS, CNIS. So this is another in, um, division of the government which is dealing with all the cyber threats, the rules which should be followed by organizations, the government protocols to be followed. You can um, learn more about these things on Google. There's detailed information in their website, a lot of information. And they also offer a lot of certifications for if you want to get certified in that area and approach jobs uh, in, in even in that organization. There's a lot of openings in the government as well for cybersecurity. OK, so what are the kind of security? Uh, like, let's just say these are the areas where you need to be having a security professional applications applications have data maybe like for example if you have a building application in your uh, shop or store they have a lot of customer consumer data which can be which has to be private and they cannot be exposed to other people business continuity let's just say like there are some hackers they try to bring the business down and they have denial of uh, service attacks they they bombard the servers with a lot of requests, like, you know, barring the service, overloading the servers or something like that to stop the company from operating. So in any time a company is not operational, let's just say Vodafone or some big company gets attacked like that. All their consumers get like, you know, connectivity issues or they're like blocked or they're done. So that causes a lot of problems. Like a somebody might be trying to call the ambulance and they're not able to do that. That's life threatening. So business continuity is very important, especially in key areas like health and communication. And cloud security. So these days, everything is there in the cloud. Your, uh, your applications, your data, everything is in the cloud. So obviously, we need cloud security. Data security, I've talked, I spoke a lot about data security because most of the threats are to data security. Database and infrastructure. So database, yeah, database is again data. What is infrastructure? So these attacks are not actually on always on um, software. Sometimes these people can actually, you know, uh, can take control of the hardware, like info, uh, Internet of Things devices, or like missiles, or any kind of security cameras. Like if somebody's going to rob the bank or something, they take control of the security cameras or anything like that, and they temporarily, you know, stop it from working so they can get in so hardware devices and any other devices which are linked to the computer are all also under threat they can even you know load the hardware into over voltage or short circuit even using their skills disaster recovery once something happens like a threat has been like exposing thousands of uh, confidential information data or anything like that all is not lost there are some things you can fix by, you know, like changing the passwords is a common thing and other things to, you know, like stop uh, it from being an entire loss. So disaster recovery is also a place where cybersecurity professionals are required. Some data can be recoverable. Some damage can be fixed. End user education as professionals, if we need to educate other people on using safe practices on the internet, like 
keep your password don't tell your password to anybody don't share your password to anybody never share your confidential information to anybody which can be used against you endpoint security is each and every device in the company or an individual or anything like that like for example if you are an end user and you have three devices a laptop a computer and a mobile phone all of three of them are linked so you have three endpoints here you are an end user with three endpoints so all three are like you know let's just say all three are connecting to a common wi-fi so if the hacker has to compromise you they have to just go through the wi-fi and all three devices are at stake so endpoint security is very important and these are offered mostly by uh, most of these internet security applications and yeah if you are like willing to work with those kind of people yeah that's the kind of thing you need to be looking for <clears throat> identity management so everybody's information like other card pan card um, driving license or any kind of information is there on the internet saved in a safe location but not as safe it can be hacked or it can be done and this kind of identification information is very important because your passport or anything like that if somebody gets access to that they might impersonate you and any kind of uh, problems they cause or trouble they do it might actually come on you mobile security and network security are again the same kind of principles same areas mobile phones need to be guarded as well and networks are very important because once they compromise the network everybody in the network is in danger so these are some of the jobs which are there in the cyber security field. I don't want to explain each and every job because that would be going way beyond the scope of this webinar, which is an introduction. So you can just look at it. Most of these things are just uh, very simple roles. And once you get bigger and bigger, like you can go into an advanced senior professional and an advisor as a security expert and testers are essentially people who test the system for security vulnerabilities forensic expert incident responder everything so you can actually google all these things i'll share the slides for anybody who want to know do more research on these things if they are interested uh, sara janet thank you thank you for your nice words okay and certification for cyber security if you want to you know if you think this is your like i want to do this i want to protect my computer i mean i want to i mean company i want to protect my nations from these kind of things this is something which is similar to what uh, military and police people do some people have a natural affinity towards that they want to protect other people they want to protect and serve their nation they want to protect companies so if you if that is your thing there are so many courses in the internet where colleges specialize in this kind of uh, field. Yeah, I will. I can send you. Uh, yeah, after the presentation, yeah, I can uh, just give me a mail and I'll send you. And so, if there are so many colleges which have uh, specialization in uh, what kind of certificate? Uh, Sara Janiad, uh, what kind of certificate are you asking about? Participation certificate. Uh, I'm sorry about that, but we are not doing that right now. Uh, I'll talk with my company to arrange it in the future. If you are doing that, you can leave uh, your email and we'll send it to you because a lot of people are asking about the participation certificates and we are thinking about that. And yeah, that would be a really good thing for people to know, like, you know, have as a proof of them having knowledge about a certain subject. Yeah, and uh, we, you can leave your email and we'll send it to you if we do that in the future as well. So yeah, for your spending time with us. So some colleges have a Bachelor of Technology, Bachelor of Science, which are specialized in cybersecurity, where they, have spe where they teach you specifically like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is a very valid point. Thank you for that. And yeah a lot of companies they give you certifications cisco ec council isaca comtia icga and a lot more these people give you certifications which are like um, yeah these people give you certifications which help you get jobs in this field 
if you are very serious about it a specialization and a certification can get you a job in this field because it's growing every single time yeah every single time a new company is got formed a new kind of technology has come there needs to be somebody who is to go against all these black hats and there are people uh, they yeah we need them and this is uh, time for questions we have over 10 15 minutes for questions any questions and uh, thank you for everybody for spending time with uh, scholar it and me and uh, we have evaluation forms you can fill them out to say your uh, suggestions about the webinar we'll be happy and the scope of the field is yeah you can get a job as a security professional if you really love protecting your company your nation your people uh, if you are an individual the chances of people uh, unless you have a lot of money let's just say you have crores and crores of money or a big deal or something like that you are not likely to be targeted by people because they do not want to get into trouble for something small most of these people these attacks are targeted at people who are like high net worth uh, bank accounts with the most money they always go in for the places with most money because there's a huge effort which goes into all these things and they don't want to waste that effort on an individual so as an individual you just have to have safe practices on the internet like having a secure password being more uh, mindful of the people or whoever you talk to the internet avoid strangers and yeah try to like you know be more sensible in terms of you know interacting with people on the internet <clears throat> this, this field has a lot of scope because the, in the future everything is going to be in the cyberspace so there's a lot of places where you can employ yourself if you really want to like you know find these things interesting and this is not a job where um, you're going to be doing something routine you are going to do something really interesting you're going to meet uh, different kind of people professionals in this field are quite different compared to other people and both in the government and private there are plenty of openings and they're set to rise as per uh, the technology and all these digital transformation effects happen and there is a lot more information than this session which i've said you guys can follow scholar it solutions on um, on uh, linkedin any kind of platform and you can even follow me on uh, linkedin I'll share my profile. Yeah, I'll send you the slide. Don't worry. I'll send you a slide after. Uh, is that your email? Uh, yeah, okay. I'll send you the slide. Data security is the thing I would highlight because the amount of data collected by the companies is huge, unmeasurably huge. There is no way like, uh, yeah, okay. I'll send you. You can um, add me on uh, LinkedIn any platform you are free uh, yeah you can ask me you can ask me much more questions after this session as well i'll be really happy to answer i love answering questions and you know passing on my knowledge to other people so you can answer, uh, connect with me on linkedin and ask me questions regarding careers any kind of technology as well not just cyber security any technology as well you can ask me questions and yeah so this okay i got your Okay, I'll note down all your emails in a while and I'll send you. This field is vast and it just keeps growing. The more tomorrow, a new kind of. Uh, uh, you, okay, I'll do one thing. I'll just. Uh, one, uh, people just hold online instead of you know individually sending everybody, I'll send you right now. One second, one second. Hold on, people, hold on. I'll send you the file.
Yes, I can organize. And yeah, every week we do organize a lot of webinars. Um, do you want, are you interested in uh, like you know learning about any specific topic? If in that case, you can contact me. Uh, I uploaded the. If people who want to like you know download the slides and information in the slides, you can click on this thing and click on download, and the PPT will be downloaded. Yeah, and thank you for all the people who said nice things about me, positive things about you. I'm really happy to share all this information and hope it's really helpful to all of you. Even if you're not planning to work on a cybersecurity professional level, I think this kind of information will be useful to now protect you from online threats and better manage your bank and finances online when you work. This is my LinkedIn profile. If anybody has any kind of questions later on, you can actually send me a request and I'll be happy to answer all your questions. And you can follow Scholar IT Solutions as well. They are really good. They're doing a really good job at educating people, organizing regular webinars and everything. Uh, do you, uh, Sarah, do you have any kind of a technology you want me to do a next webinar on or anything like that? I'm open to taking solution um, suggestions. Okay, if you have any kind of questions, yeah, you can drop me in my LinkedIn. And anybody else has any other questions? Yeah, you can ask me. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Okay, then I'll be wrapping up this uh, webinar then. Uh, any kind of questions, you can drop me in my LinkedIn and the presentation is available in that link. I hope everybody has copied that link. And if you, even if you didn't copy, you can just ask me later on, I'll send it to you again. And thank you for your time. Hope you learned a lot. And we'll see you in the, again in the next webinar.